So today we're going to be talking about drawing conclusions within historical, scientific, and technical texts. The Common Core standard that this aligns with is RI 4.3. RI stands for Reading Informational Texts, and so again, we're going to be focused on those informational and nonfiction texts giving us true facts. The, the grade level is four and the standard is three. Uh, the standard reads, explain events, procedures, ideas, or concepts in a historical, scientific, or technical text, including what happened and why, based on specific information in the text. Now, explain, we'd just be able to um, retell what we read in a descriptive way. And we have three of those informational texts known as historical, scientific, and technical, and we're going to go ahead and further define those. So what is a historical text? A historical text is a text that describes the true events of an incident or an event that took place in the past, and it tells readers about real people, places, events, and dates from the past. We're going to look for timelines, maps, places, dates, journal entries, sequence, and time order. The image above me is of the first um, landing on the moon and so an article that could be considered historical text would be describing the events that happened um, leading up to and when we as americans landed on the moon and what is a scientific text it is a text that provides information about a scientific topic it may explain causes or reasons the scientific phenomenon occurred for example like the reasons as to why a volcano erupts and why sometimes it stays dormant and we look for photographs maps graphs charts scientific data and observations within those scientific texts and what is a technical text it is a text that explains how to do something, kind of like a scientific experiment, and it may explain procedures and steps. We look for steps, directions, detailed explanations, diagrams, chronological order, sequence, actions, how-to, and procedures. Some other examples of technical text would be recipes and instructions um, on how to bake a chocolate chip cookie, uh, and they would have to be in sequential order or you would mess them up. So let's practice determining historical, scientific, or technical texts. So a sheet of instructions for the library volunteers about how to shell the Dewey Decimal System. This would be an example of a technical text because it's giving instructions. It's giving those steps. An article that lists the causes of global warming as well as future predictions if humans do not change their current harmful behaviors would be an example of a scientific text because it's talking about that scientific concept of global warming and why it's happening. A book about Ruby Bridges and her experience being the first African-American student to attend an all-white school in 1960. This would be historical because it's talking about an event in the past and it has an actual individual in it as well. A pamphlet listing the steps you can take to best handle airplane turbulence. I would benefit from this. <laughs> and this would also be technical because it is steps um, or a how to. A passage about the first ever hot air balloon ride. This is describing an event. And so that would be considered technical or historical. And then an article in a magazine about the effects airplane distress can have on humans would be a scientific text because it's talking about the concept of the stress that is applied to humans after a certain um, something happens, such as airplane distress or turbulence. So now I know the difference between historical, scientific, and technical texts. Now, what do I do with this knowledge? We draw conclusions about the text information provided and we apply them to the questions presented, the short response given, or the essay asked. And we cannot draw conclusions unless we know, okay, is it scientific, technical, or historical? Because those do really help us figure out more about the text. It also helps us better understand the text if we're able to label one of those. Um, and you might say, well, what is a conclusion? Um, a conclusion is a judgment or a decision about a character, setting, or event that is reached by reviewing all of the available information. So once you have reviewed all of the available information, you are able to come up with a conclusion about that text that's also going to be supported in the text. And good readers draw conclusions as they read to help them understand the story and or text. Good reader, much like my friend SpongeBob above. 
We also have to keep in mind that drawing conclusions and making inferences within historical, scientific, and technical texts are both a part of the problem solving process when attacking a new passage um, article or text. While they are similar, um, they aren't exactly the same thing. So here are the four steps that I use to draw conclusions in historical, scientific, and technical texts. So it's just a few step processes. Step one requires you as a reader to review all the information stated in the text about a person, setting, event, or process. Hint, your thoughtful annotations can be of great assistance when you are done with that um, first or second read. Step two is when you, the reader, considers any facts or details that are inferred but not stated. Step three requires the readers, once they have all the information available, he or she analyzes it, that means look more closely, and considers what the next logical step or assumption would be given for the situations or events. And another hint is this is where you can go back to the text to analyze or look more closely, or also again, review those annotations that you previously made. And step four, it requires you, the reader, to come up with a conclusion. You will determine the next logical steps or assumptions based on the information available. And you cannot draw a conclusion without evidence. And so if you don't have a good substantial amount of evidence to support your conclusion or your claim, then it's probably an incorrect one. And this is where you apply it to your understanding and the questions presented. So now let's see how we would apply drawing conclusions to each of the three types of informational texts. And those three types of informational texts, again, are historical, scientific, and technical. When drawing conclusions in a historical text, as a reminder, the definition of a historical text is, it tells us why events in the past happened, and there's our picture again. Um, and the relationship between these texts are there are cause and effect, and effect relationships and sequential order relationships. Cause and effects would be why something happened and what happens as a result. Sequential order relationship would be more of the text gives us an order in which events happen and why that's important to know what comes first and what comes after that. We have to ask ourselves to be able to draw these conclusions. We have a set of questions we must ask ourselves for historical texts. What happened? Why did the events happen? Who was involved in the events? And what importance does the setting hold here? Scientific texts, again, tell us facts and scientific ideas. It tells us what is happening and why or, or how or why something is happening. Again, like our volcanic eruption. And the relationships here in these texts are cause and effect relationships. We have to determine, again, why something happens and what happens as a result. But the questions here, when drawing conclusions, differ from that of a historical text. We have to ask ourselves, what happened? And here's something really important. Why or how did this scientific phenomenon happen? When drawing conclusions in a technical text, again, reminder of technical text, they are the texts that tell you how to complete a set of tasks. Examples given are directions or steps or procedures. Uh, the relationship here is a sequential order relationship. These texts give us an order or a sequence that we must follow. And when we draw these conclusions, we have to ask ourselves, what are the directions telling me to do? And why are the directions telling me to do each step? And also, it's very important to, when you're asking these questions, um, to not mess around with the order of the steps because you could end up having an explosion in an experiment. Or like I said previously, the cookie that you baked because you didn't choose to add a certain ingredient um, might taste bad. So now you're gonna go put your understanding and knowledge of drawing conclusions in a scientific, historical, and technical text to use. And I will see you next time.